Hey guys, what's up? It's Denny back. All right, all right, all right. We're going to do another video today. I've had some questions on different things on uh, HGP407. Um, one of them was, one of my questions was, you know, can I put a brushless setup in it? Yeah, you can. Um, but... There's a lot of things to consider, so today's video is going to be on different drivetrain upgrades and, you know, what works, what don't work, stuff like that. Okay, first off, we got the stock HDP407. We're going to start with that one, and then we'll work our way up to different drivetrain options and stuff rear ends transmissions um, speed controllers you know battery you know limitations and all that and I'm gonna give you a, like a kind of a, a learning lesson from what I've learned and and what I've broken and what works what doesn't work okay now the question I have with the brushless thing all right we'll start with that Okay, in, in my uh, RC four-wheel drive V8, you'll notice it's got three wires coming out of it here. That's a brushless setup right there. Okay, and it sits inside real nice and all that jazz, right? And it's pretty snappy. It has, uh, you know, has some good punch, acceleration, and it... You know, it has a lot of power. So, I bought this basically on eBay. And I'll try to give you a... Hold on a second. That's the brushless setup I had bought to put in my RC four-wheel drive V8. Okay, you see it's a 3100 kV sensorless brushless motor. And a 45 amp electronic speed control. So that basically runs up to 12 volts, okay? And so basically, this is the battery I'm using for that. As you can see, it's 11.1 volt, 3,000 milliamp battery. It runs pretty good on that. So what, the, what I wanted to get to is how much power can you put into one of these things without it blowing apart? And what's going to break first? Okay, so I did a lot of extensive <laughs> web browsing, I should say, and found out that, from what I understand, the original re-release Bruiser has plastic gears amongst metal gears, amongst pop metal gears, and bearings. However, the HDP407 has pretty much all metal gears except for the planetary gear system in the thing and so that's a plus but those metal gears aren't indestructible they do break too so when you load these things up real hard and you know you run them into something and there's no no slipper clutch to give you're gonna you're gonna lose a gear but there's plenty of parts out there for them things so you know, if you want to go out and bash it and crash it and all that, that's how the learning experience goes. Now in here, I have a 20 turn motor, which don't have a lot of power, but it's got a lot of speed. Or, I'm sorry, a 15 turn. Um, and, you know, like I say, it picks it up and runs it pretty good. <clears throat> now this here is an RC full drive setup, okay, with their... It's kind of like a crawler speed control unit and it has a little whistle to it when you take off so you you can bring the power right down from zero to very little off throttle so you know with that's good for rock crawling and all that stuff where this brushless setup it kind of when you hit the throttle it just jumps there's no, there's no, uh, 
easing into it where you can kind of like get the wheels turning and crawl over something. It just jumps over it. There's no in between. So I got a 20 turn motor here from RC four wheel drive that I'll probably be playing with here too. 20 turn gives you a little speed, a little power. They say like, you know, 55 turn motor is good for crawling because it'll get, get you up and over things. So now another thing I wanted to touch base with is the tires on it. Okay, the tires are softer and um, one of my uh, subscribers there, he had mentioned in, in depth, he's really into them too. You know, there's no parting line on them, you know. Yeah, and there's no, you know, all traction utility letters and all that. So they're, but they are a soft tire. But I've watched some videos on these things. So if you notice on this one here, I have Super Swampers with no foams in them. So when you're, you know, you're out there crawling, that's the best, that's the best thing right there because... The tire gets to deflate and you can see it'll actually form around the object you're trying to go over where those over there won't you know those will go so far they'll deflate so far then they'll just spin and spin and spin especially if you have you know your differentials are open and not locked okay now, let's see, da, 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 all the other things I want to go over was rear end choices, okay? On the original bruiser, or the re-release bruiser and the HDP 407, you know, they got the alloy gears and they got the planetary differentials in them. Um, I've never been a fan of alloy aluminum or pot metal gears because um, they, they only take so much stress and then they strip out or they break. They, you start losing teeth. Which brings me back to the power. How much power can you put in it? Well, everything, you know, has a limitation. And, and it all depends on how you use the power. You know, if, if you say you, you're going to put a crazy brush the system in the thing, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be nuts. Which I will get to that in a minute because I've done that. Um, you know, what's... You know what's the limitations? So, if you can if you can picture, oh, taking a hammer, okay, and just tap it on, say, a balloon, all right. When you tap the hammer on the balloon, it just kind of bounces in and out, okay. Now with a brushless system, you have a a setting that controls your punch. Your punch is your initial power to the motor when you take off, all right? If you set that to the lowest setting, it's not so violent to the drivetrain, okay? It cuts the voltage way back when it takes off. If you set it to the highest setting, it's like taking that hammer and smashing that balloon until it pops. You know, it's a violent, you know, all of a sudden inertia that goes through everything, and that's when things start breaking. You know, you start bending stuff, breaking stuff, and so, like I say, I've done that before. That's why, that's why I have these rear ends here. Okay, I bought these on eBay too. Um, these are actually, uh, I believe it's a copy of one of the of the good brands out there, and uh, it's kind of like everything else, everything's getting copied nowadays. Um, I had actually dropped this on the floor one time and went to catch it and violently it hit you know a piece of cement and it broke the pinion off so I had contacted the company that I thought was the maker of them and apparently they got ripped off and they would not even entertain the idea of selling me a part for them so food for thought when you buy something like that, if you can't get parts for it, it's useless when it's broken. So, being me, I don't take no for an answer and can't leave well enough alone. So, I realized that the Vatera Twin Hammers um, pinion and ring gear were pretty much close to the same. So, what I did was I ordered a set of Vatera um, 
you know, ring and pinion gears for it and uh, put them in there. So, you know, this is off the twin hammers. So, now getting to, let's see, the motor combinations. Uh huh. Okay, on that, on that. Now we're talking about drivetrain capabilities. All right. Now this one here, I'm running the brush to setup in there with the original Tamiya axles in it, and I've not had a problem with it. Um, I haven't really messed with the speed control in this. It came out of the box. I put it in there, and you know it's it's pretty cool. It's got some top end speed, and I was using the uh, RC four wheel drive single speed transmission with it. And you see one of my latest videos, I did get the extra speed um, alloy V8 there and the two speed tranny, and I had switched them around here because I had somebody comment on, will they both fit each other? Yes, they will. They will, you know, you can switch these trannies back and forth to each one. So I didn't have a problem. I had to switch the pinion because the set screw was a little taller um, and the RC four wheel drive um, pinion gear so I, I just switched them around just to save digging out a, another set screw and so this one here I've ran out in the snow and the mud and uh, you know I did some hill climbing with it and this and that and basically it was a plow truck that's what I put it together for um, now stepping on to um, stupidity here if you want to really get something that's pretty wild Okay, this is my original bruiser body that I use kind of as a basher. And um, you can see this truck here, it's a combination of many parts, okay? Basically, the only original bruiser stuff on it is the body and the frame. And uh, everything else is all pretty much aftermarket or off of the kit. And I do that a lot. And... I try to, you know, compare things together and then, you know, I will form them together and make something odd. This truck here is a 14.4 volt, uh, I think it's a 2600 kV, 8 scale motor. Um, it come out of the Sen, the transmission come out of the Sen uh, GST Colossus, uh, GSTE. And, um... So, you know, that right there is a, it's a really powerful monster truck, you know. And uh, so the speed controller, the motor is actually out of Red Cat Racing. Because um, it was a 20, you know, 2600 kV is pretty wild. And uh, the rear ends that I put in it, I'll see if I can get a picture of the back here real quick. I'll take the cover off in a minute. But if you can look at the rear ends in it. You'll see they're Vanquish. They're the Curry Rock Crawlers for the SCX-10. And uh, they, these are wild axles. They're, they're, they're pretty expensive. They're about a buck and a half a piece just for the housings. But they are true to life scale. Curry, they're even, you can see the even brand name, Curry. And uh, I put, you know, four links in this one because I just wanted to get a little space on it. It's got T-Max shocks because I was uh, I was running the RC four-wheel drive, you know, mud slingers here with the aluminum wheels on it. Now these are a heavy, heavy, heavy tire. And uh, you know, you can come, they come with different adapters in the back so you can, put, these are 12 millimeters, you can get I think 14, 17, and I think it was 23 millimeters they used to sell. But they switched their, their inventory stock quite a bit. I was running them on that truck, and basically the axles and uh, the internals, ring and pinion, are off the actual X SCX-10. You know, they're pretty, they're stock. I did put differentials in that. For the simple reason of the violent, uh, you know, the violent drivetrain. Um, and I turned the punch way down on the speed control 
because it would break things and it would just smoke those rear ends right away. I'd be twisting axles off and blowing, um, you know, ringing pinion gears right out of it. And uh, so, take the body off, you can see the way I set it up, everything kind of bolted right in. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there. Try to get it set there. And I'll zoom in on it. Everything kind of bolted right together. And, you know, I made a, a battery tray for the front for some weight because the thing does nothing but wheelies. And, uh, and then if you want to look on the bottom, up this way, the links I made out of brake tubing. Just uh, quarter inch brake tubing. And the camera adjusted here for you guys. And try to... and as you can see, everything kind of neatly sets in there. Um, I bought some links for these here because these are these are pretty loose, you know. And then I second guessed it because I thought to myself, well, the more you tighten things up the less give it'll have so when this thing takes off it's you know it's it's got a lot of slop in it here you know and uh in a way that saves a lot of drivetrain components so you know keep that in consideration too the drive shafts the more power you get to um in the rc world Scale drive shafts don't work. I mean, you're just going to wear them right out and blow them apart. So these here, where this, these are from the Sen GSTE, the cups, because that's the center. So I took one of their drive shafts, cut it down, shortened it up. It doesn't want to stay up there. And uh, so I shortened the drive shafts up in the thing and welded them back together with a welder which most people may not have the luxury of doing that. So, you know, it's a, basically a piece of quarter inch brake tubing in the center. I just cut the, I just cut out what I needed and I slid these into the brake tubing. Now, if you don't have a welder, you could possibly drill holes through the brake tubing and the drive shafts with a small drill bit and just put a pin in there and that will be good enough you know for you know for so much power um i know this video is getting lengthy and long so now these here i bought online anybody seen these before you know um these are these are not bad they, these are a little stiff i i'd like to put these on the um hcp 407 and try them out because they're nice and wide but the problem is they're a 12 millimeter hex and so I got the adapters for the, uh, where are they at here? I had them here somewhere, here we go. I got the adapters from RC four-wheel drive, but however, they set these th they set the wheels out quite a ways, you know. These here keep them set in so it looks kind of scale. So, um, you know, for what it is, I'm gonna try them because I want to see if they how it compares to um, drivability with the HGP 407. You know, the softer the tire, the better the crawler. I mean, you know, and the, and the you know, it's not bad. I mean, I've had different combinations of tires on the Bruisers and stuff, right from um, you know, these are from RC Four Wheel Drive, and uh, you know, they got they're nice and soft. They swell right up though on that because they just turned into pinwheels and um, these are your G airs if anybody's familiar with it G made um, you know they got a little little air chuck inside them there you can um, pump them up I took these here I made a video a long time ago on this is like an electrical washer you get it at Home Depot in the electrical department and I drilled some holes in it because I kept blowing out bead locks left and right and you see the back side see the plastic bead lock there 
and if you look real close you can see it's broken right here see it's broken right there that's why I, these don't work well for the violent toys they look cool though and they swell up like pinwheels also I have a video on there of that with those on there pulling a wheelie and pe turning into pizza cutters and it actually blew out the beadlock now this one here is for guys who like gas I worked on this many many years to try to figure out how do you take a bruiser and turn it into a gas truck and make it reliable and I went through many different combinations those rear ends you just seen over there I just showed you I had them in this with I had these but there was no stability on the truck it looked super scale and uh, it was cool so right now I'm running the uh, the Mad Force, the Kyosha Mad Force uh, front and rear axles in it, and this off here real quick, and there we go. you can see this is a gas version. You know, a little nitro. Everything fit right in, and really nice, and. Uh, you can see it's, it's all dirty and shit from being used. Um, this was the T-Max um, two-speed tranny with the reverse and the 2.5 motor and the fuel tank. And what I did was I took pretty much an old chassis of the T-Max and just cut it out so it fit right inside the frame of the bruiser and made a small little adapter in the back over here to put the gas tank in. And the fuel tank that's right where the uh, the on and off switch goes so there's no alterations to the body and, uh, and this here's pretty wild and if you see it's got the t-max rims and tires on it or not tires but rims the tires are actually off uh, new bright made an escalade a long time ago and uh, not an escalade it was a some kind of a Chevy pickup truck, and those were the tires that were on it. And uh, believe it or not, they're they're nice quality rubber. They're real, you know, they're soft and they're they're wide enough to keep this thing stable because that was the problem it had was the stability. So you know, you look underneath it, you see my link set up. Same thing. Now this one here, I did put the um, the ends on it and stuff. So they fit together and I did have to kind of turn down these here to get them out of the way and you can see I'm running the RC four-wheel drive punisher shafts but you see how loose they are these shafts I had a lot of problem with the drive shafts in this thing because the friction of high-speed gas and or high-powered um, brushless systems it, it it just eats everything right up so that right there I'd like to go back to like I did with the the electric brushless version I did here and use this style drive shaft in those and you know maybe upgrade my shock mounts because they look kind of shitty but hey you know I was just slamming a truck together and um, so basically there I hope that answered a lot of questions on you know what 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 the trucks are capable of if you can see anything that I put a high-powered, um, you know, motor setup in, I've had to switch, you know, the axles, transmissions. So I don't know, like I say, how um, how stout the the HD P407 um, transmission will be, but I would like to put a brushless system in and play with it, and. The thing is, it's 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 not bad the way it is out of the box, and uh, my problem is is I keep tearing shit apart and and you know I got all these you know ideas in my head and it goes from there. So one thing I did want to touch base on, <laughs> I did contact Tamaya about this truck. Um, they're basic response was we have no comment okay and you know if there's any violation of copyright branding laws or any of the 
below there, they are, they're, I guess they're leaving um, Tamaya to deal with that. So that tells me right there that the wheels are turning here, guys. So if you want one of these things, I would get it now. Because this, who knows how long this thing may, may be out. It may be out forever. But usually when it, you know, I don't know how it works with international law. But, uh, you know, just in case they would say, hey, let's get rid of it, you know. And because it's too much, too many, you know, too much of a problem or lawsuits start flying around. Who knows? Um, you know, if I was an attorney, I could give you more on that. But to me, it sounds like to me that they weren't happy about it. And uh, one other thing I wanted to comment on was uh, I had a subscriber there who was doing some videos on these. And he was playing with weight and tire combinations. And hey, the guy's really crafty, I'm telling you. Uh, you got to see the video. I got it. I, I saved the video in my, uh, my Dennis Dempsey playlist. So... Uh, he put a lot of weight on the roof, and uh, the truck was pretty scale. I mean, it was rocking around pretty good, which I thought was really cool. And he had different tire combinations with it, um, you know. And it was it 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 looked scale like a real truck, you know, the way it was rocking the body and all that. It was actually using the shocks because you only got a lightweight plastic body on here, and so most of the weight's down here. And his he had a roof rack. He put all the you know, weight on the top. And uh, it was you, if you see the video, you'll you'll think it's pretty cool. My suggestion was to take that weight, and this camper top is basically useless. You know, it's just wasted space underneath. If you want to put some weight on your truck, put it in the bed in here to kind of give it a little bit of weight here. You can put some more, you know, in the front if you want. Um, that way, it's. The more forward the weight is, the better off the truck is for, for you know, rock crawling and all that. And uh, so between the weight and the tire combinations, uh, the, the kid's on to something. So I wanted to give him a shout out there. And uh, and like I say, check it out if you get a chance. And So yeah, any questions or anything like that, just shoot me a, um, you know, a comment or something. And uh, like I say, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I got a lot of things going on, but, um, so, anywho, this is what it is, so, like, share, subscribe if you want, if you don't, that's cool, so, this is Denny signing out, so, catch you next time, adios.